Hello, hello, I'm Robin May, life coach and licensed therapist. Listen, if you have not subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe. Over here is where I'm helping you live your life with intention, fully engaged. I'm helping you elevate not just what you do, although that's important, I'm helping you elevate who you are. We are focused on growth, maturity, and being the person that God wants us to be. Over here, we're making sure we own our stuff and release the stuff that isn't ours. And periodically, I'm going to come just like this and share insights and wisdom with you. Now, I also have a podcast that you can find right here on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And so we are on hiatus. We've done season one and season two, and we are praying through what season three is going to look like, but I did not want to leave you all hanging. So... With that long spiel complete, wait, did I ask you all to subscribe to the channel? Can you subscribe to the channel? Can you comment and can you share all the things the influencers say? Listen, my daughters told me that I am not an influencer and not because I don't have anything to offer, not because they don't think that I am amazing, but because I don't use iPhones. They said, you don't get to call <laughs> yourself an influencer until you use an iPhone and I'll never do it. I'm never giving in, but that's not the point. I want to share with you about what you are about to see. On November 6th, I turned 50 years old and I cannot believe it. I am not quite at the age where I am hiding my age, but 50 really does have me shook a little bit. And I went over to Instagram and I shared via a live the three lessons I would tell 25 year old Robin, if I was turning 25, what would I want Robin to know? But not only did I share that, I shared some of the hardest lessons that I have learned this year. This year has stretched me and shook me and challenged me. And I tend to be transparent and vulnerable, but I have never been this transparent and this vulnerable as I am in this live. That's what you are about to see. But I also wanted to tell you this was a live on Instagram. And so we took that live and we edited some things out of it. And all we edited out was when I'm giving shout outs to people when they come on or one point I left the screen. And so we edited that out. So if you feel like it skips a little bit every so often, that's all it is because we were taking out some things to try to shorten it, honey, because it's still long um, and to take out some of the fillers. But I truly believe this is going to be insightful for you. Throughout the live, I am sharing four things over and over again. And you'll hear that in a moment. The reason why I'm sharing those four things repeatedly, is it repeatedly or repetitively? I'm sharing those things over and over again because people are coming into the live periodically. But I want you to hear those things as well. That's important for the foundation of why I spilled all my guts on that live. I truly hope that you are inspired by this. I hope that you get a takeaway and aha for your own life. And if you do, will you let me know? Will you comment on the video? Will you share it with someone? I encourage you to share it with one of your good girlfriends. And you all say, now, I don't know why Robin was thinking like that. But I sometimes think like this, use it to jumpstart conversations. You cannot change until you pause your life long enough to pay attention to yourself. Often we spend so much time worried about what all they are saying. You need to pay attention first to what's going on within you. And I hope this conversation helps. All right, girl, go ahead. I'm a little bit nervous for you all to hear this, but let's do it. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Happy today, whenever you are watching this, um, because I do plan on sharing this live on other platforms. And so I don't know when you will be watching this. I want to admit, I am a little bit nervous. Um, vulnerability is my superpower. And I'm gonna talk about Although it's my superpower, I'm going to share with you um, what someone pointed out to me um, that has helped me understand that I have to filter my vulnerability. I'm going to share that with you in a moment. But as you're coming on, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be here for a minute. 
Okay, so I hope you're spending your lunch time with me, but I am going to be here for a minute. Um, I'm going to share a lot today. So if you cannot stay the whole time, that is okay. You can come back to the live. I'm going to keep it on my feed. I'm also going to upload this to YouTube um, as a podcast episode. So hey, YouTube, if you're watching this now, um, but... This is the most vulnerable I have ever been publicly. I'm a little bit nervous. I tend to operate in extremes. And so um, I am curious about whether or not this conversation I'm about to have, if it is going to be too vulnerable. Um, but... Throughout the time, I'm going to share with you. I have notes in front of me. This is how vulnerable I'm about to be. I have notes in front of me that I'm looking at. So throughout this live, I am going to consistently tell you four things. I'm going to keep reminding you of four things because as you're coming on, um, you may not have heard what I said before. And so I am high. I am going to keep sharing these four things throughout this conversation. Um, number one, um, people sometimes are uncomfortable with pointing out their areas of growth. But I really operate from a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And so I personally believe that our areas of growth, when we can be honest about it and when we can really look at it, that it does not negate our strengths. And so I was telling a girlfriend this recently and my daughter, Riley, who's 10, overheard me. And she got tickled because what I was telling my girlfriend is, listen, I'm that chick. Right. I would want to be my friend. <laughs> I would want to be my therapist. I would want to um, be in relationship with me. So I'm about to share very vulnerably some hard things that I saw about myself this year. But I don't want you all to confuse that as me not thinking positively of myself. No, I just really believe in looking at your areas of growth. This is one of the things I'm going to keep sharing with you. Number two. Throughout this conversation, I am going to mention the life course a lot. The life course is the course that I offer to women in particular or the men who can handle me uh, speaking to women but still want the information. I'm going to mention the life course a lot. This is not an attempt to convince you or tell you to buy the life course. I'm just going to mention it a lot because the principles within the life course really are the principles that I use to create the life that I want. It's the principles that I use with my coaching clients directly, and they are the principles that are weaved throughout the work I do with my clinical clients. So I'm going to mention the life course a lot. Now, I am a businesswoman, and so because I'm mentioning the life course a lot, if you want to purchase the life course between now and next Friday, I am giving you 50% off. Why? Because I just turned 50. I'm giving you 50% off between now and next Friday. So go get it. Use the code Robin is 50. So I'm going to keep mentioning that a lot. Number three, I'm going to keep mentioning, I don't do subliminals. Now I'm going to talk very personally today, but I don't do subliminals. I'm not one of those girls who will do one of those subliminal messages um, that I'm really talking to one specific person, but I'm just making it general. I don't do that, y'all. That triggers me. But if I say something today that hits somebody in my life, it's just because I'm sharing my story. And the fourth thing I'm going to share is that one of my spiritual gifts is... Um, teaching. It's just one of my spiritual gifts. So I'm not just doing this randomly. I'm doing this because this is a part of my core and character values. My core values are connected to my purpose. That's one of my core values, which I talk about in the life course. You want to know your core and character values. Your core values are the things that um, that drive you, that push you, that, that elevate you. And purpose and destiny is one of those core values for me. And my purpose is to teach. And so I'm not just doing this randomly. I'm doing this in hopes that as I share my crazy, you will be able to see yourself more clearly. And so how do you get the life course? Just click the link in my bio and it will actually say life course 
or you can go to youcanlivelife.com. Youcanlivelife.com and click on course. Again, between now and next Friday, use the code ROBINIS50 and you can get it for 50% off. So let's dive in. Those are the four things I'm going to keep reminding you throughout this time. Like I said, we're going to be here for a minute. I hope you stay the whole time. If not, just come back and check this out. And do me a favor. Just because sis needs a little bit of encouragement. If this helps you, will you let me know in the comment section or will you DM me and let me know? Because I didn't run this by anybody. I haven't talked to any of my girlfriends that I'm doing this. I did not call my sister until I was doing this. I did not tell my husband I was about to do this. And so I feel very out there. One of the aspects of my business, the brand, the culture of my businesses is to be relatable, to be laid back, to be real, to be transparent. That's part of how I show up. That is how I want people to experience my businesses. Um, my clients often tell me that a family member or their spouse or a friend will overhear them in their counseling session and they'll be like, were you on counsel in counseling or were you on the phone with a friend? Because we are cracking up. We're talking about really hard stuff, but we are cracking up. I want my clients to feel like they are across from one of their besties, right? That is the culture and the brand of my businesses. Well, a couple of years ago, I think one of my really good friends just happened to pop on one of my lives. And when she popped on, she was watching. And one of the things I particularly kept saying during that live, I kept saying, because y'all, I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I am a hot mess. I kept saying that. And this particular friend whose business is very much elevated from mine, <laughs> sis is Sis is a big deal, okay? Sis is a big deal. And she called me after the live and she said, I didn't like that. <laughs> That's what she said. She was like, Robin, I didn't like that. She said, I was so confused. She said, you kept talking about what a hot mess you are. And she said, "That's not. you're not a hot mess. She said, you're one of the most uh, biblically sound women I know. Now, this is not me saying this about me. It's what my girl said about me. She said, you're one of the most biblically sound women I know. You're one of the most intentional women I know. She said, I come to you for parenting wisdom. I come to you for marriage wisdom. She said, so when you kept saying that you're a hot mess, she said, I was confused. And as we continued to talk about it, it really challenged me in how I show up. Because again, I am relatable. We are in this together. I'm laid back. I'm chill. But it exposed for me that I was not seeing my brand and my businesses in an elevated way. I'm thinking I'm just talking to my folks, which I am. But what she helped me understand is that somebody who scrolls through and happens to see that particular live, she said, Robin, they're going to be like, well, let me go to somebody who's not a hot mess because <laughs> this girl keeps saying she's a hot mess. And so it really impacted how I show up professionally. I realized that I was sabotaging myself through being genuinely who I am, but not being intentional about how I present that. And so again, this conversation is making me feel a little bit uncomfortable because I want to share some of the hardest lessons that I have learned about myself this year. And I'm going to share them real and honestly. Um, and I pray that you are able to see it as an opportunity for you to grow. Now, you may not need these lessons. You may need another lesson. That's okay, sis. Just learn your lesson. Recently, one of my nieces, hey, Jazz, one of my nieces turned 25. Now, I only have one biological sister. My husband has um, three siblings. May his brother rest in heaven. So on my husband's side, we have possibly, I mean, approximately one, two, three, five nieces, nephews. But with my sister, I, my sister doesn't have any biological children. We co-parent, okay? 
we co-parent my three daughters, okay? So she's a part of the parenting over here. So when I talk about my nieces or my nephews, often I'm talking about one of my best friend's children. So my niece, Jasmine, turned 25 the day after I turned 50. And I have known Jasmine since she was probably 10. So her turning 25 was mind blowing to me. And because we are so much alike, child, Jasmine wanted the people that she loved to write her a letter to give her. Jasmine also wanted a little cash. I mean, she didn't ask for no cash, but I know my girl. So I also sent her a little cash, but she wanted us to write her a letter to share with her something that we wanted her to know. And as I was writing the letter to 25 year old Jasmine, I began to think about 25 year old Robin. I began to think about my daughter, Ryan, who is 17 and my daughter, Reagan, who is 15 and my daughter, Riley, who is 10. And what would I want them to know at 25? And as I began to write the letter, I realized that the three things that I wanted Jasmine to know are the three areas I was most challenged with this year. I wanted her to know three things, and those three things are the three areas I have been most challenged with this year. Those three things are my relationship with God, my relationship with myself, and my relationship with others. Those are the three areas that have shook me. Those are the three areas that have shook me so much so there is a note in my phone where I share what the Lord told me. Um, I wish he had told me earlier, but around September, he told me that or confirmed to me that I have been in a season of shaking, but that the shaking was necessary and that whatever was left after the shaking was what needed to be left. And whatever was gone needed to be gone. And every time I start to feel sad about what I've lost, or every time that I feel disappointed in what I have experienced, and every time I feel scared about what I'm unsure about, I go back to that note in my phone. I go back to that note and I read it to remind myself that there has been a deep, deep shaking this year, but that there is a promise on the other end. So the three areas I told you that I have been desperately um, dealing with is my relationship with God, my, re my understanding of myself and my relationships. I'm gonna break down the lessons that I have learned in all three, but first, let me say this, when it comes to my relationship, I told y'all I have notes here. One of the things I would tell 25 year old me, what I told 25 year old Jasmine, and what I would tell 25 year old Ryan, Reagan or Riley, is that you really, really need to know God. You need to know his character. You need to know his heart towards you. First Peter 5 tells us, it says this, your enemy is um, um, roaming around like a lion looking for who he can devour. And what I discovered this year is that you really have your enemy, your enemy. He knows exactly how to get you, how to distract you, how to shake you, how to overwhelm you. And you have to really, really know God, know his character so that the um, attempts of the enemy doesn't shake you. You have to know God. And I'm going to tell you what I discovered about my relationship with God this year. Number two, you really have to know you. Part of the heartbeat of the life course, part of that heartbeat is helping you get a PhD in you. I want you to get a PhD in you. What motivates you? What inspires you? What triggers you? What frustrates you? I want you to know you because I'm going to tell you one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine, if I'm honest, is many times people are projecting their themselves onto others. A lot of times when you're talking about, I'm going to confront them. I'm about to deal with this. I'm about to say something to them. No, sis, you need to confront you. 
You need to deal with you. And a lot of times we're so busy making it about all of them. We haven't held up the mirror to see ourselves. You need to know how you show up. You need to understand that you know your intentions, but you don't know how others are experiencing you. You have to get a PhD in you. Girl, take an attachment assessment. Take an attachment assessment. What is the, I'm not going to get into attachment theory. I'm not going to get into it. Y'all tell me not to get into it because that's not the point today. But take an attachment assessment. Understand your attachment style. That can jumpstart your transformation in life. So you got to get a PhD in you. Self-awareness is a critical component to your own fulfillment. You got to know you. And then number three, you got to know your people. We aren't meant for isolation island and you don't need to align with all the people, but you need to know who your people are. Who are the people who can tell you the truth about you? Having those kind of relationships saved some friendships for me this year. I'm going to talk about how I almost lost a really significant friendship this year. Oh. I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about how I thought I had lost the capacity for friendship. Um, you have to know who your people are and you have to have people in your life who are going to tell you the truth. But also you need to understand the seasons change. And that is particularly hard for me when it comes to friendship because I am such a loyalist, which is my strength, one of my strength sabotage. I talk about strength sabotage in the life course. Your strength sabotage is that thing that is your strength, but when overused, it can sabotage you. Loyalty is my strength, baby. When I got you, I got you, honey. I got you back. I keep telling y'all, you want me to be your friend, but what I have discovered is that one of my strength sabotages is that I stay in situations or my loyalty sometimes keeps me stuck when I need to move on. And so relationships ebb and flow. You have to give your relationship space. My big brother, shout out to Darwin Hobbs. My big brother taught me this. He said, you must hold all things loosely. And sometimes y'all, you're holding so tight to a relationship. I learned that this year. Sometimes you're holding so tight to a relationship that you need to let go of because you never know. It may that relationship may need to change for a season and it may reconnect later on. And so you want to hold all things loosely. So with those three things in, God, in mind, knowing God, knowing yourself and knowing your crew, I'm going to share with you the three lessons I've learned this year. Now y'all see I'm rocking life be life in but God, life be life in but God, because honey, that has been my story this year. The life be life in, but God. So I told you periodically, I'm going to share four things because some of you are coming on and you might have missed these four things. And we need to have these four things in an understanding as we move forward. So let me share them with you again. Number one, many times people are uncomfortable when others are able to really show their areas of growth. Now I admit I tend to have a self-deprecating personality and I talked about how I realized I needed to massage that a little bit earlier, but just understand, even though I am sharing a lot of the areas that God had to show me, me this year, just understand, I know I'm that girl. Okay. I know I'm that chick just as proudly as I can identify my areas of growth. I can also identify my strengths. You want me to be your friend. You want me to be in your life. You win it when you got me. Right. But I also clearly know those areas that I need to work on. So that's what I'm talking about today. Number two, I'm going to speak often about the life course. I'm not trying to sell that to you. It really is what I use to guide my life, but I I'm a businesswoman, so if you want the life course between now and next Friday, you can get the life course for 50% off. Why 50% off? Because I'm turning 50. Oh, Lord, I didn't say I'm turning, did I? I have turned 50, and I don't know that I have often offered the life course at 50% off, so baby, get it. Use the code ROBINIS50, and you have until now between next Friday. Number three, I don't do subliminals, so if anybody comes on and you my girl, you my friend, you should know I don't do subliminals. As a matter of fact, I have posted things before and then thought of a situation that I'm in with a friend or somebody in my life, and I will take it down because I don't want nobody to think I do that. I 
I feel like if you are bold enough to post it, be bold enough to have a conversation with the person. So if something seems to hit you, child, just because I'm telling my story. And then one of my spiritual gifts is teaching. Um, so I am sharing this just because I pray that it helps you. Whew, so let's go. Category one, my relationship with God. My relationship with God this year has been shaken harder than it has been in a very, very long time. I can distinctly remember, I know y'all were like, why does she keep scratching her nose? But I have, sometimes I just start having this issue where my nose is just, you see how red it is? I don't know why that happens. Y'all, I'll have a speaking engagement. I'll be up on the pulpit or on the conference room because I speak in corporate and church and my nose will just start getting on fire. So forgive me. Oh, I didn't know that. She said, it may be adrenaline. I'm talking about how my nose itches. You know what? She says a lot of speakers have a tail. That's so interesting because it doesn't happen unless I'm on a video or unless I am speaking. Girl, you better help me. What can I do about it though? Because this is distracting to me. I know it's distracting to y'all, uh, but I can't help it. It just starts, you can tell it's red. Um, and it's really been the last two years, but this year, y'all, has shook me in my faith. And I wish I could say that the shaking is over. I, it's almost a trauma response. I'm almost scared to even suggest that. But I want to tell you why it's been shaken. Um, I want to say this. Remember, I'm sharing this because I want you to get a takeaway. And I need you to hear me. I almost want y'all to get a journal and take notes during this live. So I need you to hear me clearly. Biblical ignorance will destroy your intimacy with Jesus. Baby, write that down. Biblical ignorance will destroy your intimacy with God. And many of us have built a relationship with God on a foundation of misunderstanding or misused scriptures. We built our foundation. I want you to think about your relationship with your significant other. If your relationship with your significant other has been built on lies or manipulation or um, um, things that are shaky, then that's going to impact your intimacy. Well, biblical ignorance is going to impact your intimacy with Jesus. And what I have found is that many people have built a relationship with God on a misunderstanding of scripture or just an ignorance of scripture. I call it cultural Christianity. You've built your life on Instagram quotes and not on the word of God. And so because of that, you are finding yourself really having a hard time being stable in your relationship with God. Now, I will, let me give you some examples of what I mean. Here is something that somebody might say. God doesn't put more on you than you can bear. <laughs> Have you ever said it? If you've ever said it, then I want you to understand. Or I want you to show it to me in the scripture. Let's do that. Where does the Bible say that God will never put more on you than you can bear? What the scripture actually tells us is that he won't tempt you beyond what you can handle. The Bible actually tells us that his strength is made perfect when we're weak. And I want you to understand some of the stories that my clients tell me, that is too much for them to bear by themselves. They need Jesus to be able to, you see, I'm preaching. Everybody calm down. Tell me to calm down. Tell me to calm down. Some people have dealt with some stuff. And so when you say God won't put more on you than you can bear, then they're wondering why they're not strong enough. Baby, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says, boast in your weakness. Oh God, I can't. God, wait a minute. This is beyond me. I desperately need you. There are times that God puts or allows 
allows because you got to understand the sovereignty of God. That's why I'm saying many, many people have a biblical ignorance. They haven't studied. And listen, ignorance is just a lack of information. There's a biblical ignorance. And so you are having a belief system that's not rooted in the truth. And because it's not rooted in the truth, you're questioning your God, but he never said it. It's what some Instagram person said, and you thought it was biblical. So it's causing you to be shaky. And some of you have dealt with some really tough stuff and it's beyond what you can bear. That's why you need Jesus. You got to boast in your weakness. Let me give you another one. We'll say, you know, God ain't going to let nothing bad happen to me. God ain't going to let nothing. I, I could tell you some stories personally and of the many, many clients I've had the honor of supporting. It's some bad things that have happened. And we don't have to, I could, ooh, don't go there, Robin. Mm -mm. There's some bad things that have happened. And so when you tell somebody, God won't let bad things happen to you, but then they see this bad thing that has happened to them, they start to decide to gaslight themselves. Oh, this must not really be bad. Uh, no, the Bible says he will work all things together for good. That's why you got to understand the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. What does that mean? It means that he doesn't cause all the bad things to happen, but if he allowed it on your, if it's on your path, he allowed it on your path. Let me give it to you again. What does sovereignty mean? Sovereignty means that God ain't making these bad things happen. We live in a fallen world. World. That's why I don't make me go in and get my don't make me go get my Bible. Hold on, I'm gonna get it for you. I need you to get in the scripture. I need you to get in the scripture, baby. Not just Instagram, not just Facebook. I need you to get in the Word because this is where your life is. If you are a believer, let me calm down. Okay, so. God is sovereign. He's not causing the bad things to happen. But if it is on your path, it's because he allowed it on your path. And while you may feel anger about that, you may feel hurt about that. You may not understand that, but that's why it comes back to saying, do you believe this? Because you got to know that if it's on your path, then somehow, some way, he is going to bring good from it. It may not be in your lifetime. It may be in your children's lifetime. Listen, I'm okay. I want, I want the blessings, baby. I want the blessings, but if there's something that I have dealt with that's going to bring about good in the lives of my girls, okay, Lord. And that's where you got to decide what do you believe about his character? Here's another one that people will say, God's love means um, he wants you to, he wants you to be happy and he wants you to have what you want. And so God's love means you get whatever you want, but that's not how you do with your children. Your children don't get everything they want just because you love them. What am I talking about? I am talking about how biblical ignorance, us not understanding the word, can shake our relationship with God. And so I am sharing with you my own personal lessons. And so what are the lessons that I have learned with that? Whew. So I must admit that I have been blessed to be to grow up in a very Bible teaching church. Shout out to Dr. Tony Evans in Dallas, Texas, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, where my family and I joined when I was eight years old. I grew up with a very biblical, um, in a very biblical church. And so I had to, not had to, but I was in a situation where I was really taught the scripture. And so biblical ignorance is not necessarily my issue, but what I realized this year, here's my lesson. I told y'all we were going to be here for a minute. I told y'all I was going to be really honest. I told y'all I'm being very vulnerable. So here we go. This year has shown me how performance-based my relationship with God has been. This year has shown me how performance-based my relationship with God has been. Y'all have always been the good girl. I have always been the good girl. I'm the girl who gets all the A's. I am the girl who comes home for curfew. I am the girl who, um, when I was in high school, y'all, when I was in high school and 
people would be cursing, they would say, oh, sorry, Robin. Now, there'd be other people around, but they would just say, sorry, Robin, because I've always been the good girl, right? And so I've always crossed the T's and dotted the I's, and I've gotten rewarded for that. I didn't realize how performance-based my relationship with God has been. God, I'm doing the right things. And I, God, what, God, where am I? Something tough, watch this. Something tough is happening and my default thought is, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing? Wrong? God, tell me what I need to do. How do I fix it? How do I perform? Do I need to, do I need to fast more? Do I need to get up earlier to pray? God, what am I doing wrong? I did not realize how performance-based my relationship with God was. Y'all, I don't have to perform to please him. I am accepted just like I am. Even if I mess up, he still loves me. My sister points it to me like this. She says, girl, Robin, you the girl who Jesus was whipped on the cross and you are like, Everybody else, that was enough for them. But he probably got to take five more lickings for me. So let me work hard. I know, I know my salvation was sealed at the cross. But now, nah, baby, I got to do some more work, honey, because I got to earn this. I got to earn this salvation. I got to earn this grace. I got to earn this righteousness. Watch this. Hard work is a value for me. Hard work is a value. Integrity is a value. So I'm like, Whew, let me work hard. And I did not realize how performance based my relationship with God is. <sighs> Told y'all I'm being vulnerable. So my question to you is, what do you have in place to ensure your perspective of God is rooted in the truth of God's word and not just your interpretation of it? What do you have in place to make sure your perspective and understanding of his word is rooted in the truth and not just your interpretation? My next question for you is, who are you spiritually accountable to? Recently, I was talking to somebody, I almost gave away who this person was. I'm not trying to put them out there though. Recently, I was talking to someone and she said this very casually. She said, you know, because I have a lot of pastors. She was like, I really don't. She said, I go to one church, but not really. And she said, I have a lot of pastors. She said, I really don't think you need just one pastor. She said that to me. And so y'all know I was like, okay, okay, okay. Because what y'all don't know is I'm very socially awkward and I don't be knowing what to say. And I'm like, oh God, oh God. So I was like, is this a moment where I can say something? But I did. I said something because that's just not biblically true. Like you can love a lot of pastors on social media, baby, but that's not your pastor. <laughs> that is a great preacher. That's someone whose message really resonates with you, but that ain't your pastor. Listen, you, 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 it's not wise to say, I have a lot of pastors. No, you may have a lot of preachers that you like. A pastor is a shepherd and a shepherd knows his flock. My God, girl, you better. <laughs> girl, girl, a pastor is a shepherd and a shepherd knows his flock. Don't take my word for it. Just write this down. Go to 1 Peter 5, verses 2 through 3. Go to Acts 20, verse 28. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And so when she said that, she said, I have a lot of pastors. I needed her to understand, no, baby, you need a shepherd. Now, I wasn't talking about my husband being her pastor. I, I don't believe that people should just come to a church. You feel called to a church and you need to know because that pastor is supposed to watch over your soul. So be careful who's watching over your soul. <laughs> be careful who is shepherding you, okay? You want to make sure the person who is shepherding you is being shepherded. The person who is shepherding you has some integrity, but let me, let me go on. So that's what I have learned about my relationship with God, that my relationship with God has been extremely performance-based. And because of that, when tough things happen, 
I automatically think that I have to perform better so that the tough season can end. And that's just simply not true. There's enough truth in it though to be dangerous because God will allow us to deal with the consequences of our behavior. So it's wise to consider, is there any sin in my life? Is there any area that God is trying to shine a light on? But my default is to think because something bad is happening, I'm not performing well. And that can cause my heart to harden against God. So this year, I've had to deal with that deeply. Okay, y'all are coming on. Some of y'all don't realize I, I just learned something about myself. So often when I'm on video, y'all, y'all see my nose is turning red. Often when I'm on video or when I'm speaking, my nose starts itching really, really bad. And I just learned, who just told me that? I don't see the comment anymore. But I just learned it might be adrenaline. I never knew why that is. So you see me scratching my nose. If you are just coming on, there are four things I'm going to keep sharing. Today, I'm sharing with you some of the hardest lessons that I have learned this year. I hope you can stick with me. I hope you can share this with your people. Tell people, come join Robin for this. But I'm going to keep sharing four things with you all throughout this conversation because I want you to know this is the foundation of our time together. Number one, I know I'm dope. I'm sharing some growth areas with me, but don't feel like you got to DM me and say, Robin, you're amazing. Girl, I know. <laughs> I already know. I know I'm amazing, but I have a growth mindset. That means I don't have a fixed mindset. That means I think it's very important for me to see my areas of growth just as much as I see how dope I am. And I am dope. Number two, I am speaking a lot about the life course. And because of that, I'm offering you 50% off the course. I don't know that I very have ever really offered that much off 50% off between now and next Friday. So use the code Robin is 50 to enjoy that discount. I don't do subliminals. And so if it sounds like I am talking about somebody in particular, I might be because I am sharing my story, but I'm not the girl who does those subliminal posts because I feel like if you're bad enough to post it, you should have the conversation with the person. And then lastly, I'm doing this because I am hoping that as I share my story, you can learn something about yours. I talked about my relationship with God. Now let me talk about myself what I have learned about me. My goodness. Whew. There has been a glaring theme this year in my life. And people who are extremely close to me probably would say, baby, this theme been there. <laughs> but I am just now recognizing how bad it is. And it is such a contradiction I, okay, even as I'm saying this, I got an aha. Woo! It is such a contradiction to the work that I have done on me. But the aha I just got, I'm about to tell y'all what it is. Calm down, I'm about to tell y'all. The aha I just got is that when you're under a lot of pressure and when you're under a lot of overwhelm and when you are dealing with life, life and... <laughs> When you're doing all of that, sometimes we regress to our default behavior. Hey, y'all. Hey, everybody. I am sharing the hardest lessons that I have learned this year. And so the aha I just got was that you often default back to your um, dysfunctional behavior when you are under a lot of stress and overwhelm. And that's what this year has been. And so I think that's why this theme has shown up so hard in my life this year. And the word is avoidance. Avoidance has been the theme for my life this year in a way that has been extremely problematic. So let me tell you what I mean. There has been so many ways, there have been many ways this year that I have avoided a lot. I've avoided a lot out of fear. 
Okay. So a destruct, a surprising destructive undercurrent that has shown up this year. One of my closest friends is on here right now, and she is going to be very surprised that I'm sharing this. I'm scared to share, but I'm going to share it. There has been an undercurrent that has shown up so strong this year for me. And I have been very surprised about it because I did not know this was an issue. Ooh, here we go. This is why my nose is itching. That's the adrenaline she was talking about. The undercurrent that has fueled a lot of my life this year is this. That people will leave if you don't meet their expectations. People will leave if you don't meet their expectations. And that undercurrent has driven so much of my behavior this year. It has impacted how I lead. It has impacted how I connect. It has impacted conversations that I needed to have. It has impacted, um, I don't know what else, but there is an undercurrent. It's been surprising. I didn't realize that this was an issue for me. That people will leave if you don't meet their expectations. Now, the reason why I'm using the word undercurrent, it wasn't conscious. It was a subconscious thought that I had that was impacting how I have led, how I've engaged, how I've connected. And when I think about it, I think it's because of the life my husband and I have lived. We've been together for, we've been together 30 years. We've been married 22 years. That's what I landed on. I've decided we've been married 22 years. It may be 23, but don't tell him I can't remember, okay? He shouldn't have called out the wedding because maybe if he hadn't called out the wedding so many years ago, I would remember how many years. <laughs> Go tell him that. Um, but our whole marriage has been built, our businesses have been built on approval. We owned a movie theater and we needed people to buy into us and to be okay and accept us and accept the theater for us to make money. He's been in politics and you got to do what they're wanting you to do to stay in office. Now we pastor a church and you know, people will... We passed our church, okay? And so I have struggled with feeling like people will leave if you don't. And, and not just in that, those, those areas, business, politics, and ministry has uh, flooded over into other areas of my life. And so that undercurrent has caused me to avoid a lot of tough conversations that I needed to have. Told y'all the lessons. I've learned some powerful lessons this year. The next powerful lesson that I've learned this year is that I care deeply about impact. Now, I've talked about your strength sabotage. Your strength sabotage is what I talk about in the life course. And that is the very thing that's your strength when overused can begin to sabotage you. So your strength sabotage is that thing that's a strength, but when overused can sabotage you. So I care deeply about impact. I care deeply about what I say and how it will make somebody feel. I perform the matrix trying to avoid hurting people's feelings, but I'm very proud about that. I'm very proud about the fact that I'm not just out here being insensitive to what other people may be experiencing. That's something that I really think is amazing about me. But there are two sides of that coin. So my strength sabotage is that my strength is that I care about impact. But I have cared so much about impact. The sabotage is that. I am sucking up a lot and not articulating and verbalizing what I need and what I am experiencing. So then I find myself mad at folk. I'm mad at folk. I'm over here mad at folk. <laughs> I'm mad at folk because I'm like, you don't see me. You don't understand that what you're doing is hurting me. And they probably are like, no, 
No, I don't. Because you didn't tell me. <laughs> How would I know? You didn't tell me. You can't hold people accountable for what you haven't told them. And so... This year, I have seen how I care deeply about impact. And that's a beautiful character strength. But Robin, you care so deeply about impact. And you're doing so much of your own work, y'all. It frustrates me how many times people are quick to call somebody out and tell somebody else what they need to tell them and get somebody else together when half the time you need to be getting you together. You need to go do your own work. You're ready to pop off and have a tough conversation with this person when it's not really that person's thing. It's your issue. And I believe that so strongly that I do so much of my own work. Yeah, by the time I have a conversation with somebody, they going to know that I have done, asked myself all the hard questions. I have talked to somebody else about it to get their feedback. So I do the hard work, but I've done that so much that I don't know that I am giving people an opportunity to know how they have impacted me. So it has created an undercurrent of frustration for me. And I've been holding people accountable that would have no idea that they have hurt me or disappointed me. Yeah, so <sighs> my strength sabotage. And then lastly, my Thera coach, I call her my Thera coach. Um, she was my therapist and my life coach several years ago. And she said something to me uh, that when I told the people in my life, they wanted to send her an offering. She said, Robin, you're addicted to complicated. And so this is the third lesson that I've learned about myself today or this year that I am so addicted to complicated that it has hindered my businesses and kept me from succeeding to another level because I'm addicted to complicated. So I'm about to tell y'all a story. I had to insert this into the conversation. I didn't have a chance to talk about this during the original video, but I wanted to insert it right here because it's super important. It's another one of the major lessons that has resonated with me this year. One of the principles I teach in the life course is this concept of your personal dysfunctional pattern. We all have one. Your personal dysfunctional pattern is that thing, that mindset, that behavior that continues to trip you up. And it's the thing that shows up over and over again. And my one of my dysfunctions or my personal dysfunctional, uh, personal dysfunctional pattern, PDP, is this concept of being addicted to complicated. My um, Thera coach, like I mentioned, told me this a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, and it has resonated so deeply in my life. But this year, oh my God. So I'm going to tell y'all this quick story. Now I am telling you this story. I'm not asking you to judge me. Okay. I'm not asking you to judge me. I share my crazy so you don't have to share yours. I know now that this was crazy. But at the time, as I was in the middle of it, I didn't think so. Okay. I cannot believe I'm sharing this with you all. Okay. So, um, recently I went to a conference that my friends were hosting at their church. My friends, um, Vincent and Felicia Campbell, they were hosting the Rocket Pastors Conference. They've been pastoring for 16 years and actually pastor what we call the other TFC. Our church is called TFC and their church is called TFC, but they've been doing this for 16 years. Okay. And so they were hosting the Rocket Conference and I wanted to attend. And so we, you know, my husband and I registered, my husband was traveling. So he attended virtually, um, but I was in person. But these are our people. So I text Felicia and I said, hey, girl, I still have to see some clients during our time. Um, so can I use one of the offices to see my clients? Right. And so she said, of course. So she allowed me to use um, a space that her children use on Sundays, her daughters use on Sundays. 
Long story short, I go through the whole conference and my mama taught me to leave a space better than how you found it. So I'm done with the conference, the, the couple of days at the conference. I had gone into the space a few times to have my sessions, my uh, some counseling sessions. Um, and so I'm looking around the space um, so that I could make sure everything was organized and was how I found it. I looked at one of the pillows and the pillow had makeup on it. I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, I done got makeup on these people's pillow. This is where it gets really embarrassing. So they had given one of the uh, gift bags was a book bag. So they had given us a book bag. So I take the items out of the book bag that I had, because I had not only the items that were like their, you know, just the flyers and stuff they had in the bag, but I had also used the book bag to carry all of my stuff. I took the stuff out of the book bag and I take this pillow and I stuff it into the book bag. Why did I go through this? Because I knew I was going to be leaving out of the space to go to my car. And a lot of people at the church know me. They are so good to me whenever I'm there. They are just so good to me. And so I knew it would look odd me walking out with this pillow. And so I put the pillow, <laughs> put the pillow in the book bag. So now I'm carrying all my stuff in my own with this book bag. So I get home because I'm thinking I'm going to wash the pillow and I'm going to send it back to her and say, girl, I got makeup on your pillow and I wanted to take care of it without it being a problem. So I wash the pillow. The makeup doesn't come out. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take a picture of the pillow, find it on Amazon, order them another pillow and send it to them. I cannot find the exact pillow. So I find a very similar pillow, but because there were two pillows in the office, I only got makeup on one. I was like, I can't just replace one pillow because then it won't match the other pillow. So I got to order two pillows. So I ordered two pillows. The pillows arrive. They're just the pillow cases. It's not an actual pillow. Lord. So now I have to order pillows to insert in the pillowcases. Yeah, all of this happened. Meanwhile, I have sent a message to one of the ladies at the church who I'm friends with as well, who works very closely with Felicia, my girl. And I say, hey, friend, let me tell you what happened. Girl, I got makeup on the pillow. So I have ordered two new pillows and I'm going to mail them to you. And then can you put them in the office? And then once you put them in the office, let me know. Because then I'm going to tell Felicia, girl, I got makeup. The friend says, only you, Robin, which should have been my first indicator, <laughs> which should have been my first indicator that I was doing the Robin. No, I'll say, hey, girl. So I, the pillow comes in. I put the pillows in the pillowcase. I take these two pillows plus that original pillow that I stole and I put it in the box, tape it up. My husband and my daughters are watching all of this and they're like, mama, what? Lee's like, baby, what? Don't worry about it. I write a note to Felicia. Girl, I got makeup on your pillow, but I send it to her. Her friend gets it. Our friend gets it, takes it to her. My phone rings a couple of days later. Felicia says, friend, a, you have a problem. <laughs> she says, friend, you have a problem. Why would you do all of this? <laughs> so now I'm realizing, okay, I really was doing the robbing. She said, why didn't you just say I got makeup on the pillow? And I said, because I knew if I told you I got makeup on the pillow, you would say, Robin, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. And I wanted to fix it. And I knew if I told you, she was like, okay. E -E. And her and everybody else who I've told this story were like, even if she said that, you still could have sent her a gift card. You could have, all of this that you... But that ain't even, that's not even the worst part. She goes on to say, and then Robin, it wasn't even your makeup. She said, my daughter got that makeup on. My daughter got that makeup on that pillow. 
that's not even the worst part. She then said, and it happens often, so I bought this stuff and she showed me this stuff that I just sprayed on the pillow and I washed it and it came out. See? And showed me a picture of it. Talk about addicted to complicated. I'm sharing that, not for you to judge me. I'm sharing that because that processing and all those hoops I was jumping through and all that stuff I was doing and all those roundabouts I was doing is an indicator of how I show up in a lot of areas. I make things way harder on myself than I have to. And I have to remember, Robin, you tend to complicate things, take it down three notches, consider that there could be another way of doing this. My personal dysfunctional pattern, as amazing as I am, as incredible as I am, my personal dysfunctional pattern is I can complicate things and make it more difficult than it has to be. Now, why are you judging me? What's your PDP? Okay, let's keep going. I'm gonna let the rest of the video play. <laughs> I'm so addicted to complicated that I make things harder on myself than I need to. So those are the lessons I've learned about myself. Okay, I'm almost done. I've learned lessons about my relationship with God. I've learned lessons about myself. And then I've learned lessons about my friendships. Now, remember, um, I am sharing all these areas of growth. It doesn't mean that I don't think I'm amazing. It just means that I'm open to my feedback. So number two, I keep talking about the life course. If you want access to the life course, I'm offering you 50% off. Use Robin is 50 to get that discount. I don't do subliminals. So if I'm saying anything, just know if you think it's about you, call me. We can talk about it. And I'm sharing this so that you can learn from my stuff. I learned a lot about relationships this year. And I thought that one of my core values had changed. Friendship is a core value for me. And I had decided that maybe it wasn't any longer. But what I realized is no, friendship is still a core value for me. I just didn't have the capacity to show up as a friend in the way that I normally have. And so I felt disappointed in me. I have needed to lean on relationships and friends in a way that I've never had to this year, in a way I have never had to. And in a way I would never ask, I would never ask people to show up for me in the way some people have shown up for me this year. I have a question. Are you too young to know what I am referring to when I say Erica Badu says she's an artist and she's sensitive about her stuff? If you're too young, don't, don't even tell me. I don't even want to know. But that's me, girl. I, I am sensitive about that whole little um, um, live I just did, that whole story I just shared, all of it, honey. I put myself out there and I hope that it blessed you. I hope there's a takeaway for you. I hope that even if you wouldn't have responded to things the way I did or you don't process it that way, I hope it's allowing you to pause to pay attention to how you process and how you think through things. This is really the heartbeat of it. All of us are on a journey. And listen, while I might knock it out in this area, I have some areas of growth in this area. And the main place where I have an area of growth may be the very place that you are strong and vice versa. So I really do hope that that conversation helped you. And if it did, girl, can you subscribe to the channel? Can you comment and can you share with somebody? You know, when you do that, it moves it up the algorithm to let folks know that we are here. It was my honor to spend this time with you. And until next time, remember, I'm committed to helping you elevate not just what you do, although what you do is important. I'm here to help you elevate who you are. I'll talk to you soon.